Yeah, th thank you for having me on the show. Yeah, I, I think it was a, it was a solid uh, quarter, meaning that uh, orders uh, continue to grow. Uh, book to bill ratio above one, which is important. We continue to build the uh, order book. Uh, revenues up 11%. I think that's pretty much in line with what's expected. Margin continues to develop good and 17.4%. Uh, so uh, I think it's a solid. But maybe the best thing is the cash flow that... Uh, we are now seeing that it's really coming. So we're happy for that. And Maybe we'll also China is, uh, yeah, sorry. I, I was going to say, actually, China, uh, you uh, you saw where I was going with that question. I, I did want to ask you whether you've seen some signs of stabilization come through from China since the last time we spoke. This morning, of course, we did have China GDP numbers suggesting that uh, there is some sign, some uh, evidence that um, the, the data has started to bottom from here. Are you seeing it in terms of your own demand and how that's panning out? Yeah, I mean, if we look at the quarter, uh, three out of four business areas had actually a stable or growth in, in China. And the overall number was minus three, so it was uh, somewhat lower uh, than we expected. So. I think there is some signs uh, where we see still challenging is on the robotic market, uh, which was quite weak uh, uh, during the quarter. Bjorn, good morning. Juliana here. Let me ask you about Europe. Um, yeah. I can see that Europe also struggled a little bit this quarter. You've noted that um, Europe declined to the tune of a low double-digit rate, and while the underlying market softened, the rate of decline was accentuated by a high comparable last year. Is this all a timing issue, or are there uh, other weak points that you would want to flag to investors in Europe? I think uh, Europe is probably showing maybe the weakest part if you look at the three regions. Uh, but I mean, the weakest was actually Germany, down 33%. But that is a comparable, which was very high because we got some big orders last year. So if you exclude that, I think it's about half of that. But so still quite, uh, quite weak. So the driving force is still uh, North America. Mm. Um, and, and in terms of what's driving that strength in North America, can you break down where the bulk of the growth is coming from? Yeah, I mean, I, I see if you look at our orders, it's, it's actually large orders that are really showing strength, while the underlying market is somewhat uh, weaker. So it's actually a big, uh, big orders related to renewables, uh, to uh, the green transition, and that's exactly where ABB is well positioned today. So uh, that's where also where we should see good growth going forward. It is interesting. I'm just uh, picking up on some of the commentary that you put out in the press release this morning. You're saying the order development was strong in projects and systems-related businesses, uh, but this more than offset the impact from decline in parts of the short cycle businesses. How long do you expect that theme to continue, that the longer-term projects are going to compensate for the weakness in, in some of the more cyclical areas? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have seen it now quite a number of quarters that the underlying business somewhat softer while being good compensated by big orders in this uh, transition part. So it's maybe a little bit too early early to say that it, it would be over, but it has been like this almost for a year now.